Hello, Professor Patulano's ENG 102 class. This is Dan Calandra from the Mercer County Community College Library. And today we're going to be going over where you guys can find some sources for your final paper. Uh, just to let you know that the library is open. So if you want, uh, you can feel free to come in. We guys can help you out in person. We just ask that you please wear a mask when you come into the library. Uh, if you need any further help besides coming in, you can always email or call as well. So your professor has provided me with your final paper prompt. Uh, it's 10 pages. Uh, it is due on December 14th. So you can see it here and you should have the prompt in Blackboard as well. Uh, if you look through it, you're going to create a research question of your own. That's about some of the readings that you did. She provides a couple down here as well. Uh, and then she suggests a couple of things first, uh, like what your paper could be about, self-sacrifice, suffering, etc. cetera. Um, so you can develop a research question based on any of these or you can come up with your own. She says it's possible that your question may not have to do with anything of the above. She does say that what she would like you to do is if possible, put the texts in dialogue with each other, try to connect them in some way. So basically, if you ask a certain question about self-sacrifice, how does, for example, uh, Jean-Luc Marin deal with it and Regina Schwartz and uh, Dimitriou Stanilou, I think I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, but how do these people deal with, say, self-sacrifice or suffering or whatever it may be? Uh, and then she also gives you some ideas about the types of sources you should find. So for example, peer-reviewed articles or books or book chapters. Um, and she even says that the Bible may be a good source. And if you can please choose the King James version on that one. Okay. She also then provides kind of some uh, general guidelines and stuff like that. But I'm not going to focus on that part because that's that's for her. So what we can do is we can go into the databases and we can take a look for these things. Just like your previous recordings and your previous sessions, uh, just remember that it's all based off of keyword terms. Okay, so you may want to take the title of the work or the author of the work. So that's a picture of uh, this Dimitri standalone guy there. That's him. There's a single solitary light bulb illuminating his his uh, thoughts. <laughs> so uh, you can take the keywords that she suggested, suffering, specific kind of suffering, slavery, truth, justice, etc. So you can uh, apply these keyword terms in your search. Okay. So it's really up to you uh, how you want to approach this. You can go into, say, the literature criticism databases and try to find articles there. You can try and go into, say, some of our other more general databases and see if you can find stuff that's maybe about uh, philosophy. You can even, as your professor suggests, take a look at some historical sources. Okay, so what was slavery actually like in the 17th and 18th uh, century America? So you've got a lot of options here is what I'm trying to get across. It's good because you got to fill up 10 pages, but it's also you kind of want to make it specific, right? Uh, a paper, you know, uh, about slavery in the 17th century in the United States is still going to be a huge paper, okay? So you want to try to make it as specific as possible. That's why these keyword terms can help you out. And remember, too, when your professor says a scholarly source, she means something that is written by an expert, okay, that has been peer reviewed by other experts before it has been published. So these are going to be your scholarly or your peer reviewed sources. Um, books normally count as a peer reviewed source as well. And I'll point out where you guys can look for some uh, of our electronic books, all right? And then finally, you want to combine your keyword terms together using the Boolean operator and because that's what's going to narrow down your search. You're going to say, find me these two uh, keyword terms together in the same article or book. So and is what's going to give you what's in the little uh, yellow shaded area there. So if you want to do something about, say, uh, the Toni Morrison novel that you read, you could search for Toni Morrison and uh, African-Americans or and Prussian. OK, so let's take a look in a couple databases quickly and see what we can find. And I'll show you the ebooks as well. So the first thing we want to do is, as you guys remember, head to the main Mercer website, www.mccc.edu. And then from there, I like to scroll down and go under the current slash returning students section. And I click on the library services section. If you guys want, you can use the MERS search database here. I'm pretty sure I've showed you that in a previous video. So what I'm going to do today is I'll point out some of our more subject specific ones, and then I'll show you the, uh, the ebooks. Okay. Now, the subject specific ones can be really helpful. Oh, again, they're over here on the left where it says databases subject. 
So you can go and you can pick a specific one. So for example, if we wanted to do that Tony Morrison search, right, we would want to use maybe a literature criticism database. So for example, under the humanities, we have a good literature criticism database called Gale Literature. And what's nice about this is if you just want to focus on a piece of fiction, okay, uh, I think you guys read A Mercy by Toni Morrison, you can go and you can plug in Morrison's last name and you can say and A Mercy and see what comes up. And then you'll get your, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll get your search results and you can scroll through and take a look, okay. So if we want, we can go and we can click on one. Now, Sometimes you will get really lucky. So for example, look at this one, E Pluribus Unum, the American origins narrative in Toni Morrison's A Mercy. Hmm, that might be interesting because that might deal with not only our, our Toni Morrison article, but maybe it'll talk about slavery in uh, that time period we're interested in. I don't know if you guys know this, it may not be interesting to you, but E Pluribus Unum uh, is, is Latin. It means uh, um, of many one. It's you know, the, the, the slogan, the motto of the United States, it's in God we trust got added much later, I think in the 50s, it's e pluribus unum of, of many one. So there's your useless piece of trivia for the day. So we click on this article, um, we can go and we can scroll through it and you can see it's highlighted Morrison's name, it's highlighted a mercy. And so we can scroll through and we can take a look. You can see that this article is fairly long. Uh, I'll show you what you can do with it in a second that might help you out. But if you read the first couple of paragraphs and you say, oh, this is good, I want to use it, great, okay, you can uh, download it, you can print it, you can click on the little send to and email it to yourself as well. So if you want, make sure you hang on to this article uh, in some way. You can generate the citation as well. There's the little cite button, click on cite, generates our citation. So we can go and we can uh, copy and paste this into our works cited page. So as I said, this is a long article, right? So we can scroll through it and you can see there's a lot of uh, text and stuff. So what we can do is if we've got a really long article like this and we're interested in something specific like say slavery or African-Americans, right? What we can do is in our article, whether it's in a PDF or uh, an HTML web page like this, if we hold down our control key and hit F, that's our shortcut for find. So I can type in slavery and see what comes up. And there you'll notice it's found me the word slavery in the text throughout. So I can go and kind of hop around and see where um, that keyword terms appears in the text. So you may get, you know, a, a nice section that talks about slavery specifically in this particular work. OK, so that's one way to focus in on kind of what you're uh, interested in, as well as, you know, uh, being able to say, like, is this really, you know, for me? Because this can be uh, a lot you know, especially if it's about 7,000 plus words. So there's gonna be a lot in here. So you wanna focus on what's, what's important to you. You'll notice too that you, as you scroll through this, just like you guys, when you write your paper, you can see here, uh, Renan, it has the citations in the text as well, whether it be footnotes or page numbers, okay? So they're telling you where they got their sources from. So if you go all the way to the end of the article, it's gonna say, here's the works cited, okay? So if we want, we can scroll through and let's see if we can find that Renin uh, piece. There it is, Renin, what is a nation, okay? So you can see this is linking us to a, a book. Here's, you know, an interview with uh, Morrison right there on top, okay? You might find other articles, things like that as well. So as you scroll through these articles, as you read them, uh, if you see something that looks really helpful, you may want to go and uh, find that either book or article in uh, another database or in our uh, catalog, okay? So the article can help you. The database can help you as well. You'll see it's got our uh, keyword terms here. So there's uh, this keyword specifically for the novel. So if we click on that, we'll get all the articles tagged with that keyword. You'll see too that the author is uh, hyperlinked. So if we click on that author's name, it'll show us other articles by them. So if we like what they have to say, we can go and we can we can do that. Oh, look at this one it's about Black Panther. Neat. So uh, we can do that. We can also, if we really like this journal, like let's say it's Morrison Studies or something like that, or Early American History, we can click on that journal title uh, and it will show us some more information about the journal. So we can browse the issues, we can search within it, right? So it's up to you guys what you want to do. 
point is, is that if you are able to find one good article, you'll be able to use either the article itself, the, the in-text citations, or have the database help you find other sources for this um, article, okay? So that's if we wanted to do, say, a uh, focus on kind of literature criticism, all right? If we wanted something a little broader, a sort of more like, well, give me an article. So let's look at your professor, what she suggests, you know, about like, say, uh, self-sacrifice or suffering, right? And one of these authors. Well, we may not necessarily be dealing with a piece of fiction. It might be nonfiction. It might be sociological or philosophical. So what we can do is, right, we'll take this last person, this person's last name. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to pick one of our other databases. So again, we've got a big long list of them here. If you're not sure which ones to use, that's okay. Sometimes it's honestly just best to go to the general databases and select say ProQuest Central and use one of those. And what's nice about ProQuest Central is that you get a good mix of popular sources as well as scholarly. And since it's a general database, it's gonna to have topics on pretty much anything. So if you wanna do literature criticism, great. If you wanna do the type of search we're gonna do, that's fine too. There's two new buttons here that you didn't see in the previous database. Uh, that is the full text button. You're always, always going to want to select that because that will give you the complete article, not just the abstract or citation. You want the whole thing, so the full text. Then if you need a peer-reviewed source, you would select that as well. Um, I think for this assignment, you pretty much do, so we're going to click it. But if you wanted newspapers, magazines, et cetera, included, you could unselect that, and you would get not only the peer reviewed, but you'd get the magazines and newspapers as well, okay? So if we want, we can plug in our Dimitru guy's last name, plug him in there. We can plug in another and, right? So we can type in, let's say suffering and see if we get anything. And if we do great, and if not, we will um, narrow it down a little further. All right, so if we do that, you can see, okay, here's a whole bunch of, of uh, search results for our topic. And we can scroll through and take a look. All right. Now, uh, if you guys get stuck for keyword terms, we've only got 90 search results. That's not too bad. All right. But if you guys get stuck, if you look here where it says subject, okay, if we click on subject, if we click on more, it's going to show us a whole bunch of keyword terms related to our topic. So if we want, we can include these articles or we can exclude them. Okay. So if we didn't want to say anything about Jesus, we could we could remove that or uh, patients, we could remove that as well or cardiovascular disease and diabetes. OK, so if we want, we can do that. One of the other things we can do as well, see this uh, Dimitri guy's name, he keeps we're interested in him. So what we can do is if we want, I'm going to take his name here. I'm going to include it in my search. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these double quotes around his name. And if I do that, if I use a person's name, or if I use a phrase like self-sacrifice or social justice, if I do that, I'm telling the database, I need these two words to always appear next to each other, okay? So by doing that, now you can see it says, I have Demetri, Demetri, right? It's always going to be these two words next to each other. So if I do that, excuse me, if I do that, uh, it's going to keep them connected, which will decrease the amount of search results you get, as well as just focusing in on that phrase. So you can, if you want, do a double phrase search. So I'll type in social justice. So now I'm telling the database, I want an article that includes this guy's name along with the phrase social justice. So these two, two keywords, T phrases, have to be in here together, okay? So if I do that, it will now give me six search results. All right, and so I can scroll through and take a look. Now, again, depending on the paper that you're writing, some of these may or may not be for you. So I'm just gonna click on this one randomly. I don't know if it's good or bad. All right, I'm just gonna click on it. And you'll see it's basically the same thing. So uh, let me go back to that, that first article we found. All right, so here's the first article, title, author, journal. Okay, some keyword terms, same deal. Title, author, journal. And then we scroll down, and there's some keyword terms, okay? Here's the abstract. The abstract can be helpful because it very quickly tells us what this article is about. And if it's good, great. And if it's not, we can skip it and move on, okay? So we can scroll through and take a look.
And again, too, if we wanted to, I can do a control F, I can type in social justice, and there it's found social justice. Or I can put in um, Dimitru's name, right? And it's found Dimitru in here, okay? So again, uh, that's, that's one of the ways you can do it. And if you wanted to, you can also use the uh, PDF. I can open up the PDF and I can, if it's been OCR'd, hopefully, um, find my keyword term. So there's Dimitri. It's Dimitri. Same thing, social justice. It's found social justice. Okay. Great. And again, if I wanted to hang on to this article, you saw I've got the PDF right here. You can go ahead and you can print it as well. You can print it here too. You can email the article to yourself if you would like. Again, Mercer, Gmail, wherever. And then finally, you can generate the citation. So if you click on the cite button, it'll do that for you. Now, please be careful because we are in a general database, it defaults to you know APA. So you'll just wanna change it from APA to the MLA 8th edition. Oh, there's the MLA 9th edition. Um, I'm gonna say use the basic one, MLA 9th basic, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, that looks good. So you can use the MLA 9th edition basic or is there another one? Title casing, let's see title casing. Oh, I see, okay. This is more useful stuff for you. Title casing, see how it says, uh, you know, each of the first um, letters of the first, new trends, Greek or theology challenges, et cetera. These are all, all capital. If we change it to, um, if we change it to no case changes, it's gonna all lowercase. So trends will be lowercase, T will be lowercase, C. Um, I don't know which one you want. You can ask your professor. Usually in um, MLA, it was, it was, uh, where's the MLA 8th edition? If you use the 8th edition, you'll see that it's capital. So if you want it to look like the MLA 8th edition and use the 9th, you would use the uh, title casing. Again, ask your professor on this one. This may be something that's specific to, to them that they would like you to do, okay? But there, you've got the citation. All the periods and commas and italics, all that stuff is correct. So it's got the, the, the journal italicized, it's got the database italicized, the volume, the issue, it's got the URL for the, the article as well too. So all that's taken care of for you. It's just the, the casing, okay? And again, too, you can use the uh, article. You'll see if we go to the end of it, it'll have its list of, of references. Though this uses footnotes. Let me see the references. No, no references. So all the um, footnotes contained, there's your, you know, here you'll find the, um, the, the citations and references. So here's St. Vladimir's Theological Quarterly. Big, big time stuff. So this uses footnotes as opposed to the references or works cited page. But same, same concept, okay? And again, too, if you want, you like what the author says, click on their name. Here's the journal, okay? Here's some other similar articles to it. And then the keyword terms, all right? And this database, you can see we found a uh, theology journal. So if we went back, we can also search for, you know, Tony Morrison, and I'll put it in quotes, a mercy. And so now if we do that, we're gonna get more sort of literary um, journals and sources, okay? Her early American literature, all right? So again, it's up to you guys. You can use this database for everything. If we wanted to, we can, you know, say uh, slavery and United States and uh, I think Virginia, Virginia, Virginia was where slavery first began. Okay, so if we do that, we can see what we get. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you want to, you can say also 17th, oops, 17th century. Sometimes if you want a specific historical period, typing out 17th century is good. Um, you can try typing in as, you know, a, a number like 17th. Also for this, you might want to try like colonial America, okay? Uh, you might want to try early Republic, things like that, because uh, the time periods can be kind of a little uh, tricky to do when you search. And you can see you've got over like, you know, 8,000 search results. All right. So if you want, you can scroll through this one as well. 
Finally, uh, in addition to using the databases, your professor suggests our books. If you guys want, you can certainly come in, look through our catalog online, uh, come in and see if we have a book. But if you're not comfortable coming in, that's fine. You can use our eBrary uh, electronic books, which are great as well. What's nice about eBrary is that like if you wanted, you know, a, a book about a big topic like slavery, okay, or the early republic, this is going to explore it in much more depth than an article. If you take a look at an article, right, you can see how this is really specific. Again, this isn't, you know, necessarily on your topic, but, you know, uh, looking into the floor of Dutch Brazil biotechnical, you know, like see how specific this is. Same thing too with an actual one about, um, you know, white slavery here is indentured servants, okay. So if you want something that's a little broader, a book's going to be better for you, especially when it comes to a, a history topic. So if I type in slavery and United States, all right, we can now see that we've got a whole bunch of um, books on our topic. Okay, so we can take a look and scroll through it. One of the things, too, that I'm going to suggest is... Uh, here, like this article, oh, this sorry, this book. If we click on it, okay, you're gonna see, you know, it covers a specific time period, which is great, but you can see that time period is very long, so nearly a hundred years, okay. So what we may want to do is first take a look at the description, okay, make sure it's gonna talk about what we wanted to talk about, all right, and then we're gonna look at the table of contents and see, okay, is there anything uh, interesting here, right? So there may be a chapter. Uh, you know, introduction that might be good, or there may be a chapter. See how these are are kind of um, chronological. So you have the revolution and the early republic through the civil war. So if you're just interested in say the the early republic, we can click on that, and we can click on you know chapter three, and we can just use chapter three. So you may not necessarily need the whole book, okay? And we can scroll through and we can take a look. And again, too, just like the articles. If we want, we can actually search within the text of this book. So see where it says search within book here. So I can click over here on the left in that little search bar. I can type in, um, let's type in our phrase. Let's type in New Jersey and see if we can find anything in there. So we'll search there. It has found me the phrase New Jersey 23 times in the book. If you look here, this little arrow is telling you it appears in this chapter. And the more the bar has been filled in, the more um, time New Jersey or whatever your keyword term is mentioned in that chapter. So I can click on that little arrow and you will see here, right on page 45, it has found me the phrase New Jersey. There it is, okay? So we can scroll through and we can look for, you know, here it appears three times on page 66, all right? And we can scroll through and we can take a look. New Jersey, New Jersey, New Jersey, right? Okay. So again, this may be uh, another way of saying like, okay, I know chapter five is great, but chapter five is like 30 pages. Where in chapter five am I going to look? You can do that. Okay. Right. And again, just like the databases, you can go ahead and you can print uh, this in a PDF format. There's your, your PDF, do the chapter download, or you can print individual pages here with the little printer icon. So you just tell it what pages you want. You can use the little chain link icon which is nice because it'll give you a link directly to the page that you're on, which is helpful. Uh, and then finally, if you wanna do the citation, you can look, click on the little get citation quote bubble there and it'll generate the citation for you, okay? So uh, all of these databases, all these eBooks work basically the same way. So if you guys can come up with a good set of keyword terms related to your topic, you can basically copy and paste that keyword term from database to database to get you articles and what you're interested in, okay? Or books and what you're interested in. All right, I know that was quick. I hope that helps. Uh, if you guys have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. Here is uh, all of my contact info. So if you guys get stuck, lost, confused, you have a specific question or trouble with a citation, again, please let me know. I'll be happy to help you guys out, okay? All right, well, thank you. Good luck on your paper. And uh, we are here at the library if you need us. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.